What's up folks? Today I want to talk about my first impressions of and why I bought the Fujifilm X100V. First of all, it's important to note that I didn't need this camera, but it has some features that made me want it more than its predecessors and it does a few things that made it more likely that I would use it during weddings and that sort of gave me the justification that I could probably use it to be making money with rather than just a street photography camera. So the main reason I got this was because of the quiet mechanical shutter that it's got. Uh, the electronic shutter is fine on the X-T2 that I use but if there's any movement, it can kind of get a bit warpy. And so for that reason, I very rarely use it. I was also looking at Ricoh GR2 or 3 and the X100F. They all have quiet shutters and would do the job. Um, but I ended up landing on the X100V. And the real reason that I actually landed on this was that I somehow managed to find it used. It's only been out for like a month, maybe two months. And I found one 300 bucks less than retail at B&H Photo, which I did not expect to find. So for 1100 bucks, it was like three or 400 more than I used X100F. And for the improvements that it's got in this camera, I felt like it might be good enough to use during weddings, have it as kind of like a, like a little sidearm camera to just pull out when I'm all set up for a different lighting situation with my main camera and I just need to take a couple quick snapshots um, or some detail photos. And I had planned that I would maybe get an X100F or GR3 to shoot like that at weddings, but when this came up and it was what I think is a pretty reasonable price, um, I would rather have the sort of higher quality that I think this has. Also, it's 35 millimeter equivalent. The GR is a bit wider, otherwise probably would have stuck with the GR and um, the lens is better than the X100F. Uh, but all in all, kind of an impulse buy, but so far, not mad about it. So I'm talking about the lens, uh, it's the same 23 millimeter, 35 equivalent lens, but it's upgraded or they've changed the optics to it or uh, they did something and it's better now. One of the problems with the X100F was up close at wide open apertures, it would be really soft and not just like a little bit soft, but like really pretty unusable soft. And they fixed that with this. It's really nice. It looks great up close and it's very sharp. So no complaints there. That helps me a lot with a lot of situations when I'm shooting weddings. And it's just nice to have for street photography. Um, another thing is it's potentially weather sealed. The, the old models are not weather sealed. The GR, the Rico GR is not uh, weather sealed either and all of that sketches me out slightly. I like to shoot in the rain or if I am traveling somewhere in a dusty environment I've had dust get dust or sand get into lenses before and it makes a grinding noise so it's nice to have weather sealing if you can. The only thing is you have to spend like a hundred bucks to get the filter thing that goes on the front that makes it weather sealed. At some point I would probably grab that and that's kind of annoying. I guess they did it for the design to make it smaller rather than having a bigger lens on the front. Also for shooting weddings, the weather sealing is really nice to have because if I'm using the 23 1.4 at a wedding, um, it's not weather sealed. So just having that little bit extra peace of mind with this extra camera is um, a little bit of a no brainer to me. And yes, I'm kind of making an excuse there because I could just buy the 23 F2 and stick it on the X-T2 or whatever camera and then it would be, that would be weather sealed too. So that's kind of a mute point. Um, so I mentioned the shutter was one of the reasons. If I put it up to my microphone here, this is the sound of the shutter, super quiet. And um, yeah, that's really nice for street photography, especially if you're really close. Um, or in a quiet environment even, uh, that's pretty useful at weddings. Next thing I like about this is the tilting screen. I, I, I don't mind a tilting screen on a camera, I quite like it on the X-T2 and um, it's nice to have on this camera as well. The only weird thing about it is that you can't really access it except from this little tab here, which is kind of nice because the design is very flush, it looks like it's very clean and nice and if you didn't want the tilting screen 
it doesn't really make the camera look any worse, but you just this is the only way to make it tilt out. And if you want it to tilt down, it's a little bit awkward because you have to like pull it out first that way and then tilt it downwards, uh, but that that's fine. I'm be willing to deal with that. You can't tilt it vertically, which is a shame, but I can see why they did it to sort of keep with the design of the of the X100 series and not, not make it any bulkier than they had to. Autofocus is definitely faster than the older models and it's definitely nice to have. Maybe not as fast as the 23F2 or the 35F2, but it's definitely fast enough uh, for, for the vast majority of people. Um, nobody's really gonna notice it being slow at all. And that's another plus because Ricoh GRs are also known to be a little slow of focus and the X100F is just a tad slow as well. A lot of the time I use it on manual focus anyways when I'm shooting street, but um, still I'll use the back button focus to still have access to autofocus. So it seems to have good solid build quality. Feels probably better, more like, not sure if it's more sturdy, but like more like uh, refined than the X-T2 at least and definitely more sturdy than the old X100S that I used to have. A little upgrade, at least materials wise, from the X100F. The viewfinder on it seems bright to me. It seems nice and big. I can have no problem seeing through it. Uh, the OVF and the EVF look good. Um, I quite enjoy using the optical viewfinder actually, and uh, I like having access to both. So that's kind of a plus to have over the X-T2 that I normally shoot on. And um, one thing that is strange is the, the, the lack of D-pad on the back here. And I think that was just to make it easier to grip. So there was like more space for your thumb. I don't know if people used to um, hit the buttons and like jump to a, a different setting or something like that. And it used to annoy people, uh, but they've made the decision to remove that. And now you have swipe functions, which which work fine. I haven't accidentally swiped at all, but I just, I, I, you can still, map to the little button up here. You can map your lever here to different things, even the focus ring if you want, and um, the, the AF on button here. So there's enough that you can map that's also buttons as well. And I don't find that I need to be constantly changing settings. If I don't like the touchscreen thing, I'll just not use it eventually. One thing that I really like about this camera is that it's, it's actually a lot smaller than the X-T2 with the 20 mil 23 millimeter on. When you see them side by side, they don't seem that much different. The X-T2 is just like, it's got more grippiness on it and it's a little bit deeper with the 23. But when you put this like over your shoulder and you're walking around, it doesn't get in the way of your arm as much, if that makes any sense. So I mean, that's not a, a reason to spend 1400 bucks, but it's nice to have, to have it there and you can, I even had it under my jacket at one point. So it was, it, you know, you can keep it out of the rain if you don't have the weather sealing thing on it. And uh, if it's really heavy rain, I wouldn't even want to have the X-T2 um, with a weather sealing lens out in that for long. So I would try to cover it, but you can't really fit that under a jacket. So it's just kind of nice to have that extra compactness um, to, to hide away when you need to. And that was one of the reasons that I really wanted the GR at one point, because that will literally just fit in a pocket Whereas this is a little bit too big to fit in your pocket, unless you have really, you know, big pockets or a big jacket or something like that, it it would be fine then. But even then, it's almost like too heavy. So if I put it in, I have a Columbia jacket. If I put it in the pocket of that, it feels bulky in my pocket. So I would rather have it on a strap. The ergonomics of it are are fine. It's I mean, it's designed to be a small camera, so the grip is not great. It's very small there and there's not a lot on the back to sort of hold onto with your thumb. Uh, and for that reason, I find it hard to operate with one hand, even compared to the X-T2. I actually found that my pinky would get sore because I'm trying to like balance the whole camera in there when I'm changing settings with my thumb. Maybe I'll get used to it and maybe I'll just have to like adjust the way that I shoot a little bit with it or I'm not sure yet. It's not a huge deal. As long as it's on a strap, I'm not too worried about dropping it. Yeah, one-handed, it's a little more difficult than I would like it to be. I haven't taken a ton of pictures with this camera yet, but I'm gonna throw up on the screen what I have shot so far. And I actually got one of my favorite photos of at least the last few months, and definitely my favorite photo of this whole time being quarantined uh, with this camera on the second day that I had it. So um, that's a pretty good sign that I'm gonna like it. 
if I managed to already take photos that I really like with it. So obviously this is not a review at all, it's just my first impressions um, after picking up this camera. It's the newest camera that I've ever bought. I've never bought a camera that hasn't been at least a couple years old. Um, I've bought a new camera before, but like the model wasn't new, if that makes sense. And this has only been out a couple months, so this is, this is, a, this is strange for me to do this. And especially because the X100F is probably 80%, maybe even 90% of the way there as this is, and you can get it cheaper. It would even have been fine for some of the wedding stuff that I would probably shoot with this. But if I was just shooting street or travel, I would almost definitely have just went with the X100F. I may or may not recommend the same thing to anybody else who is thinking about getting this camera or the older model. So yeah, this is in no way a review. This is just my first impressions and me talking about why I bought this. Coming up, I'll do like a video on how I set it up uh, to work, how I like it in the menu system for like street photography slash weddings. And I'll do a couple photo walks with the GoPro on the camera or on my shoulder or something like that and take some pictures with it. Maybe in a couple months time, I'll do a full review on it whenever I feel like I've taken enough pictures with the camera to do an actual review on it. So if that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment down below, tell me what you thought, if you've been thinking about getting this camera or just getting one of the older ones because they'll do pretty much as good a job as, it, as this one would. And yeah, do me a favor and check out this playlist in the corner up here and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.